All right, guys, 13 men's fragrances that have stood the test of time. Fragrances that I grew up with, that I love, and I still recommend. Now, these fragrances have gotten reformulated. Yes, they're not like they used to be, but I still recommend them for what they are. So if you're curious to learn about them, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in, this is Sebastian. Yeah, today we're talking about some men's fragrances that I'm a really big fan of, that have stood the test of time that I'm gonna to recommend to you guys. These are fragrances that are classic, for sure. So if you're a new nose, if you're pretty young and not experienced with fragrances that came way before uh, you were born, then you might not be into them. But if you have an open palette and you're into discovering the classics when uh, fragrances were really masculine, then these are the fragrances that you should uh, definitely look into and watch this video to find out what they are. So we're gonna go to, what are we gonna go to? Where is that fragrance? Here it is. We're gonna go to Aramis first. Aramis with Aramis from 1966. It's a leather, woody, sheeper fragrance created by one of my favorite, favorite classic fragrance perfumers, Bernard Chant of IFF. Uh, Aramis Aramis is such a great fragrance. Uh, my dad wore it and I used to steal sprays from him. So this to me definitely has that distinct classic smell that I really, really love and brings back many, many memories for me from when my dad was wearing it. It was much more intense at the time, but for me, you definitely get the presence of uh, leather here and oak moss, but lots of other stuff is going on here as well. For me, what I remember with uh, Aramis Aramis is that it was kind of a splash and it was more cologne-like, but really a hefty men's cologne when uh, fragrances were much more robust back then. Really in your face, big, uh, bracing, masculine fragrances. I still think this fragrance smells great and if you want to discover some of the work of Bernard Chant, you should definitely look into this. And I still think Aramis Aramis has, you know, stood the test of time. Aramis is under Estee Lauder and uh, they kind of uh, created fragrances back and forth with uh, Aramis and they were making fragrances that were the, the the ladies counterpart over at Estee Lauder. So if you're familiar with a lot of Estee Lauder feminine fragrances from yesteryear, you're probably going to be familiar with some of the smells here as well. But this is such a great fragrance. There's a lot of aromatics here, a lot of earthy woody notes, and of course leather and oak moss. Very, very good classic. I still think it still smells great today. Definitely lighter, but definitely worth checking out. Aramis by Aramis. Let's fast forward to the 70s. Uh, going to the house of Givenchy. This is Gentleman Givenchy, the the original from 1975. This is considered a woody fragrance and it's created by Paul Legere. So to me this is kind of like a patchouli bomb but very earthy and woody and with some ambery touches as well. Features lots of vetiver with cinnamon, there's leather, there's patchouli, there's tarragon here. It's got spices, very unique spices that are not kind of found in a lot of you know modern men's fragrances like tarragon doesn't show up that often if at all but cinnamon does cinnamon adds the warmth here it's very warm it does create an ambery effect the patchouli is in your face really kind of a rough woody earthy patchouli here the vetiver adds the woodiness of course the earthiness again and then of course the leather comes in to give it a bit of a beastly animalic quality it still smells great today really nothing like any of the other fragrances that are kind of sort of in the same uh collection but they're not really because the gentleman Givenchy collection is still there but this to me is just its own fragrance on its own and still definitely recommended for someone that enjoys earthy woody fragrances with spices and ambery touches as well so this is gentleman Givenchy actually Givenchy gentleman from 1975 uh, the second fragrance I'm talking about today so let's go back to the 60s once again uh, we're gonna be staying in the 60s for a bit but going to the house of Dior this is also Sauvage, this one right here. So this came out in 1966. It's still one of the fragrances that my dad wore as well. But I think when he wore this, I was much younger, and I don't remember him uh, in his uh, fragrances on his on his 
dresser, you know? But I remember him talking about that uh, a fragrance that he liked. So it came out in 1966. It's a citrus aromatic, kind of bordering a fougere, created by Edmond Rudnitska, a classic perfumer. I'm not as big of a fan of Edmond Rudnitska's creations as I am with Bernard Chant, because Bernard Chant has created such great classics that I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of. But here, I think this is one of the best fragrances that uh, Edmond Rudnitska has created, and it's uh, one of the best fragrances ever created, I think, with a an amazing name, Au Sauvage. It was such an amazing name for a fragrance, Dior decided to copy it and redo another fragrance in the 2010s with the same name, Sauvage. This is very citrusy and fresh and aromatic. Lots of bergamot here with hedion, there's lavender, oak moss, patchouli, there's basil, there's lemon, vetiver, pettigran, rosemary, and floral notes. Now, I believe also um, Edmond Rudnitska created the original Moustache from the House of Rocha, not the current one that came out like three, four, five, six years ago, but the one in the 50s, I think it came out. So it kind of sort of is in the same ballpark, whereas the original Moustache from uh, Rocha does have a bit of animalics, but here, I think this, this particular fragrance, Eau Sauvage, has been modernized. I think it got reformulated, and the reformulation is really, really great. This is the Eau de Toilette version, and it's a great, classy fragrance to wear. I highly recommend this one. Definitely has stood the test of time. It's Dior Eau Sauvage, uh, the third fragrance I'm talking about today. Staying in the 60s, going back a year, one year, a fragrance created by Jean-Paul Guerlain. It's Habi Rouge, this one right here from 1965. This, I would call it a citrus woody amber or citrusy woody amber fragrance. And it did get a reformulation in the early 2000s. And I believe at that time they launched an Eau de Parfum version of this one too. And this is the current formulation. I still think it stood the test of time. Now I've been recommending a lot on the channel the Eau de Parfum version of this, but I've kind of circled back to the Eau de Toilette and really enjoying this uh, citrusy take on the original. Actually, this is the original Happy Rouge, the Eau de Parfum it came after. But what I like about this is that it's kind of a very ambery, woody fragrance with light rosiness there and lots of citruses. There's definitely a lemony presence here. For sure, lots of lemon with amber. There's bergamot, there's vanilla spices. There's leathery touches here and rolly, bitter orange, cedarwood, lime, and patchouli. It's a fantastic fragrance. Still smells great today, but very, very classic and definitely very Guerlain. And from what I've read online, this is the male answer to Shalimar. So I guess I can sort of kind of see uh, the, the similarities. They're not identical, but I can see that there could be kind of offsprings of one another, but a great scent. Still smells great today. Uh, and it's Guerlain Habit Rouge from 1965. In case you haven't noticed, or you will notice later uh, down the line, we're gonna be talking a lot about fougeres in this video or aromatic, citrus aromatic, aromatic fougere fragrances. Uh, I think back in the day, that's the kind of style for men. There was hardly any sweet fragrances for men back in the day. Fragrances for men have gotten sweeter and sweeter, but back then it was lots of herbs, lots of aromatics, lots of spices, woods, and of course leather as well. This next fragrance originally launched in 1884 and it was redone in 2010, 2010, so it's definitely stood the test of time. This is Fougere Royale from the house of Hubegant, and it's a fantastic fragrance. It's an aromatic Fougere fragrance, barbershop fragrance, originally created by Paul Parquet, but it was redone by Rodrigo Flores Rue in 2010. It's geranium, lavender, rose, carnation, oak moss, patchouli, cinnamon, amber, bergamot. There's chamomile, clary sage, tonka beans, vanilla. There's herbs as well. And for me, from what I've read about this particular fragrance, uh, Paul Parquet was trying to emulate the smell of um, ferns, which is fougere in French. So the ferns have a smell. It's very faint and light. So they were saying that if it had a very distinct smell, a fougere would smell like a fern. So that's what they did is create a, a fougere, which is supposed to smell fern-like. And I think they've accomplished it. Totally green, totally herbal, totally aromatic, and all that kind of stuff come to mind. And of course, shaving soap comes to mind as well. But a fantastic fragrance, Fougere Royale, originally from 1880. 
1984, and that is the 2010 reformulation. Of course, it still smells great today and it stood the test of time. Moving on to the house of uh, Guy La Roche or Guy La Roche, this is uh, Dracar Noir, one of my all-time favorite fragrances. Uh, it means a lot to me because I, I wore so much of this. I started wearing it around 85, 86, and I probably wore about four bottles. Um, throughout the, the, the latter part of uh, 80s onto the 90s. It's a, once again, it's an aromatic fougere, originally la launched in 1982, and it was created by Pierre Wargnay, perfumer at IFF. And I believe the first perfumer I mentioned earlier was also Bernard Chant, was also with IFF. So this is lavender, lemon zest, patchouli, rosemary, verbena, coriander, fir balsam, juniper berries, oak moss, sandalwood, and balsamic notes. And for me, it's an aromatic fougere barbershop, very herbal, very green, very aromatic, and a bit, um, you know, kind of like weed and earth at the same time as well. This is a, a very strong fragrance when I wore it. I wore so much of it and I kind of got burnt out on it, but I remember it being so, so intense and overwhelming and the stuff would last on you for days and days and days. It's, the fragrances were so strong back then. It is watered down now, for sure. It's totally watered down, but it just totally takes me back to the mid 80s when I was in junior high school and wearing this stuff, really loved it. And the bottle is a very, very iconic for me as well really has a lot of meaning for me. And this, probably one of my all-time favorite fragrances, and it still stood the test of time here. This is Dracar Noir from the house of Guy La Roche. So moving on to the house of Estee Lauder's and fast forward to 1997. I'm speaking about a fragrance for men called Pleasures. Pleasures for men. There was a Pleasures woman as well, but I, I don't know much about the Pleasures for women. I knew a lot about the Pleasures for men because I wore it back then. I would call this a fruity fougere from 1997 and it's created by Nicholas Calderon, Carlos Benaim, Jean-Claude Delville. So I did feature this in a Carlos Benaim fragrances video last week. If you I haven't caught that video, go catch it. And this is definitely a very interesting and very unique kind of take on a fougere. Definitely very 90s for me because it's got this watery touch, ozonic touch in here. So it makes the fragrances very fluid and watery and it makes it for an easier wear. And this is the kind of fragrances in the 90s was known for because in the late 80s and into the 90s, um, uh, marine and aquatic fragrances were becoming very popular. So basically they created kind of a fruity aquatic fougere here. A lot of leaves notes. There's nectarine, there's allspice, there's moss, citruses, ozonic notes, coriander, ebony tree, sandalwood, and red red ginger. A unique fragrance and I think this still st has stood the taste test of time. It still smells great. I like its zing and spice in here and then that unique uh, nectarine kind of a uh, stone fruit note. A wonderful fragrance that I, I'm not tired of at all. It's pleasures for men. I'm glad I bought a bottle a couple of years ago and I still love the way it's smells. But moving on to the house of Zeno Davidoff or Davidoff, Zeno Davidoff, back um, in time to 1986. This is uh, Zeno Davidoff right here. This is powerhouse to the max and a, and a kind of um, a patchouli earthy woody fragrance and also kind of in the same ballpark as this particular Givenchy gentleman fragrance but a bit more modern obviously because it came uh, 11 years after uh, that Givenchy gentleman did. This is woody amber fragrance created by Michel Almerac from 1986 as I said and then also it mentions that it's created with Pierre Bourdon and Jean-Francois Laty. So these three perfumers created this. I discovered in a database that I was researching but it has notes of geranium, lots of patchouli, there's amber, there's sandalwood, there's lavender, there's rose, bergamot, musk. Man, it smells fantastic. I love it because the patchouli is so intense here, but under there you get the aromatics of um, all the aromatic notes, including lots of geranium and then the rose to really kind of work with the, uh, the geranium to give you a very geranium rosiness uh, to the fragrance. And of course, lots of sandalwood here as well. A bit smooth, a bit creamy, and a very, very unique fragrance. But then there's also the... Uh, 
about the mention of lavender here, which is also very, very prominent. And for me, I feel like it, lavender, geranium, they're different, but kind of similar texture and quality, even though they smell different, uh, it kind of a, a deal here. But a wonderful fragrance with Zeno Davidoff. Definitely has stood the test of time. And I should say also, a lot of these fragrances are gonna be at discounters for really great prices. I think this one still is uh, selling for really uh, inexpensive uh, prices uh, out there at the discounters. So D Zeno Davidoff, really, really wonderful fragrance. I really love that one. Check it out if you don't know it. I highly recommend it. But as I said earlier, if you're young and haven't experienced fragrances like this and you're only used to the fragrances that are currently selling at places like Macy's at the department stores, you're probably going to smell some stuff that you might not be into. But have an open palate and really grow into enjoying some of the greatest uh, classics out there. So fast forward to the 90s once again. We're going to the house of Kenzo, and this is Jungle Pour Homme. This one right here, created in 1998. It's considered a woody fragrance, and it's created by Olivier Cresp, who uh, six years ago created uh, one of the world's most iconic fragrances called Angel. So this is the male version of the Women's jung uh, jungle elephant, although this is jungle poor om, and then that's called jung jungle elephant. So they were a little different, but for me, uh, I can see the kind of sort of distant uh, relation with the fragrances. But also, this particular fragrance is sort of in the kind of a similarity to a declaration uh, for men, which came out probably like a year or two prior to uh, this one coming out. So this is Gaiac wood with lime, there's Mate, there's nutmeg, there's Atlas cedar, there's benzoin, cinnamon, and Lebanon cedar as well. So lots of cedar here. It's very, very woody and very, very spicy. And of course, uh, lots of woods and uh, some aromatics come in as well with a kind of a faint citrusy edge to the fragrance. Very unique fragrance, really great. I think it's a great alternative to uh, declaration if you think that decoration is really pricey. You can get uh, Kenzo Pour Homme for quite uh, inexpensively at least. Last time I checked it was quite inexpensive. So Jungle Pour Homme uh, from Kenzo uh, is a great scent. Then moving on to the house of uh, Oscar de la Renta. This is Pour Louis, this one from 1980. And this is considered a leather fragrance. And I couldn't find a perfumer for this one, sadly. I still haven't been able to find a perfumer. So if anybody knows a perfumer for Oscar de la Renta Pour Louis, do let me know. And I bought this a couple years ago from the discounter for about 25 bucks and including such a great looking bottle as you can see it came with such a great smell as well and I feel like it still stood the test of time it is over 50 years old no, is it 50? 20, 20, no, 40 years old. Uh, it's definitely over 40 years old and still smells fantastic. Yeah, it's gotten watered down a bit, but for me, it is a super amazing smelling classic men's fragrance that you can get very, very inexpensively with also a very sexy bottle, as I said. I do really love this bottle. Uh, I think it's very, very classy. It features lots of oak moss with aldehydes. There's lavender, there's carnation, leather, of course, because it's a leather fragrance. There's juniper berries, patchouli, latinum. So in the end, it has a, a the aldehydes note in here, which aldehydes is very, very light and airy, so it gives fragrances a bit of a lift and airiness, but everything else is very dense and heavy. The oak moss, the, uh, the um, leather, the uh, patchouli, the labdanum, so it gets ambery, earthy, woody, aromatic, very, very unique masculine offering that has stood the test of time, I think. It's a great smelling fragrance. I really love it. Uh, it's Oscar de la Renta Pour Louis uh, from the house of Oscar de la Renta, uh, and and, uh, I don't speak a lot about that brand and uh, I, I guess I should look into some of their older fragrances still. What do you guys think? Is there anything else from that brand that's worth looking into? So up next, going to the house of Loewe. This is Essenzia from 1988. So we're back to the 80s here. And this to me smells so, so good. So it does have similarities to something like Polo Green, but it's an aromatic fougere, whereas the Polo Green is more of a leather chypre. This is created by Jacques Chabert, and it's from 1988, and it features notes of fir, pine tree, lavender, juniper berries, green notes, tarragon, oak moss, leather, vetiver. It eventually becomes a leather, earthy, dry down for sure, but lots of aromatics, lots of green notes, lots of kind of like forest-like pine smells in here, and it smells super fantastic. If you're looking for this fragrance, you're probably not going to find this bottle. Uh, they have now uniform bottles that are kind of like flat rectangular bottles. The bottle color will be green like this, I believe.
believe, but it is the, the different. But it's a great, great fragrance. It smells fantastic. I really love it. It puts you into that kind of like green pine forest setting and very, very aromatic and green and woody and earthy. So Essenzia EDT from Loewe. Make sure though, make sure it's the EDT that you get. If you get the EDP, you're gonna get a completely different fragrance and it's gonna go down into that leather event just like uh, DNA. Whereas this goes into that kind of polo-like DNA. Uh, up next, going to the House of Flores, a fragrance from 1951. It's number 89. Still smells fantastic. Smells, still smells great, but yeah, it does have a classic smell. It does have a kind of a mature edge to it. You might think it smells like dad or grandpa, but man, this stuff is so good. It's considered an aromatic fougere once again. Perfumer is unknown. It features geranium, neroli, sandalwood, lavender, iris or orris, rose, ylang ylang, bergamot, cedar, musk, and lots of other notes. Of course, oak moss thrown in there as well. They have reformulated this one and it smells great today. It has enough intensity. I'm assuming when it first came out, it was even beefier, much more intense, much more longer lasting. But to me, it smells super amazing. Very, very classy, very masculine, kind of an aromatic and geranium and neroli heavy kind of a barbershop fragrance that's really delicious. So number 89 from 1951 from the House of Flores is a great, great scent. Check it out and let me know if you're a fan of that one or that house. And then last but not least, I recently picked this up uh, at a discounter because I smelled it at Bloomingdale's and they, they had it there and I smelled it and I said, wow, that takes me back to the late 90s. I need to get a bottle. So I did buy a bottle. This is from the house of uh, Boucheron. This is Jaipur Om, this one right here. This smells yum, yum, yum. So this came out in 1997 and I wore so much of it. Uh, I wore one bottle, but somehow I had also ended up with a big box of samples. So I kept going through samples of this time at the time I was not a collector or anything. So it takes me back to the late 90s and a place when I was really into something like Angel or Amen for, for men, Angel Men. And then this was kind of sort of in that ballpark of warm, spicy, ambery kind of gourmand, but also kind of took me back to when Lamal launched because Lamal is a kind of a warm, ambery, vanillic. A lavender scent. Here we had the, the vanilla and ambery qualities, but different spices like cinnamon and um, cloves as well. But cinnamon cloves, there's amber, there's benzoin, there's definitely vanilla here, there's cedar, and then there's patchouli. And it's an amazing fragrance. Still smells good today. I think it still st stood the test of time for sure. But it is launched from 1997 and it was created by uh, Anique Minardo, who I ha happen to be a fan of her creations and I see that she's make, kind of making a comeback with making fragrances. But are you a fan of Jaipur Om from the house of uh, Boucheron? This is the EDP version. There is an EDT version apparently, but this stuff smells great. Yes, it's definitely thinner than before. It's not like it used to be, but I think it definitely does the job and trick for me to take me back to the days when I used to wear Jaipur Om from the house of Boucheron. So that's the, the last fragrance I'm speaking about today. I do have a bonus for you, but let me know your thoughts on these 13 fragrances for men. What do you think about them? Maybe you think they're completely you know, useless now. They don't smell as good now. They've been just watered down and everything. I made sure to not put the really, really badly reformulated watered down fragrances here. These definitely are reformulated, but they still smell great to me today. And I think they're passable and I think they're still great classic masculine fragrances that have stood the test of time. Let me know your thoughts on these fragrances and also let me know other fragrances that you consider classics that have stood the test of time that still smell great today. Put a comment down so I can find out. But either way guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video, please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. Bye. So I did want to recommend one more fragrance which actually featured last week in the Carlos Benayam fragrances video as well in addition to the pleasures which I just spoke about a little while ago. This is Polo Green which created, which was also created by Carlos Benayam. And the reason I'm leaving this as a bonus fragrance because the dry down is not very pleasant for me. The initial spray and blast is really, really amazing. It was launched in 1978. 
created by Carlos Benayim, as I said. It's a leather sheeper fragrance. It features leather, bourbon vetiver, tobacco leaves, cypress, patchouli. There's castoreum here. And of course, for me, the dry down is disappointing. I think the reformulation is kind of disappointing. But for me, it still does the trick. I think I get the experience from the initial blast. It's just for me, the dry down, as I said, it's a bit off-putting and the animalics have been increased and you can tell it's a synthetic leather castorium thing where before everything was so beautifully blended, nothing really stood out and everything just wore really magnificently. But the dry down is disappointing for me on this one. But for me, the initial blast is great. So that's why I'm featuring it as a bonus fragrance. It's Polo Green from 1978. And that is the last fragrance for me today. Let me know if you wanna see a part two of this video. I'd like to find out. But either way, have a good one. Bye-bye.